we're talking about the world in general. Have you had an opportunity to see what happened in Minnesota yesterday? Did you see that? How could you miss it? Yeah, it, it was it's unfortunate. It, it shouldn't be happening still. It hurts my heart, and I, I've been having I've been emotionally roller coaster. Sometimes I didn't actually almost didn't want to do the podcast because I try not to do anything publicly speaking for at least 24 to 40 hours because you're so angry and you can just say and just spill out negative things and you have to have an opportunity to process it. So after processing after 24 hours, how do you feel about what happened and what can we do to move forward? What should we do now? What 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 should we do in your opinion? These are some tough questions, oh my gosh. Um, you know, I think this country's flawed. It's, it always has been. And I'm gonna try not to get emotional because I do have, you know, black brothers and, and cousins and friends and, you know, It's just the amount of hate that people have in their hearts, you know, it, it's just so unbelievable. Like, I, I cannot fathom, you know, as a normal human being, how do you kill someone else? You know what I'm saying? Like, that's all right. Like, something's not right. Something's not right up there. You know what I mean? And I, I simply cannot fathom it. Because I'm not a person who, who obviously is going to kill someone. So it's like... I, I just can't imagine the things that would go through a mind of a person who is just so has has so much hate in their heart for a group of people for what? Because I'm a little darker than you. Like I just I never I never understood it. You know. And I'll be a thousand percent honest with you. I'm such a diplomatic person. You know. I'm I'm always trying to play the devil's advocate, and it's like, well, you know, there's there's always got to be a better way. But I, I'm not gonna sit and lie and say that I didn't feel the rage of the, the people in the videos where you see them looting and you see them breaking, you know, police car uh, windows. And it's like, we're, we're angry, you know? Oh, I'm gonna get emotional, but how can you not? Yeah, you're on the edge. You're, you're, you're right there. You're on the cusp of something really dangerous happening. And if we don't get a grip on it, it's gonna get out of control. Whereas right now, I just think that, you know, that could have possibly been me. I have daughters, I have uncles, I have, you know, I have brothers. That could easily have been me there doing whatever I'm doing, going through my normal day. Just told my wife I'll be right back, going to the store to get something, to pick something up. And not thinking about this could be my last time coming back home. And to have somebody to basically just suffocate you on camera is beyond fathom. You, you can't think of things like this. You can't write things like this because you don't think someone would take someone's life on camera with no remorse. No, He basically, looking at the video, you can see the devil rearing his ugly head, not caring for the single life at hand. And when I watched the video, I was like, there's no way that he cannot see this guy on the ground is having a hard time breathing. He's telling you, if a guy screams for his mother, you know, help me, then you know that at this point it is very serious. Nobody, no grown man is gonna scream for their mother unless they're in some real pain. And when I heard that, I was like, and, and it almost got me, you know, I was a little bit upset that like, it's time to put the cameras down. Like you're recording this man and he's losing his life, but you're not doing anything. It's okay to record it. We need to have it filmed because we don't know a lot of things is probably happening when things are not on the camera. But at some point, we have to put the cameras down. We have to intervene. I know it's, we have to have some type of money in place to, to get people out of jail or, you know, just we have to have things in place so people can understand, like, if something like this happens and you intervene, we got your back. Because I think that's what's happening. And we don't have anybody that has our back that we know if we get in the middle of this, something really goes down, we get arrested. Is there going to be someone to come save me? Is there going to be someone to come help me get out of jail? Is there a group of people that are going to come stand up for me? Putting hashtags out is one thing. And we're, we're looting and you're destroying things. That's one thing. But jumping in the middle of that, just for a split second, just to change the whole narrative, to just say, hey, get off his knee. You're, you're kneeing him on, the, on his neck and he cannot breathe. He is losing his life right now. Instead of just saying, oh, hey, I got you on video. I have your badge number. 
what are you doing? And the police officer who are standing around, they're just as guilty. Like we always say, oh, there's just one bad apple, but if the bad apple is constantly happening over and over and again, maybe the whole thing is bad. You know, they're they just have so much, they have so much hate for us. And to basically take a life on camera just breaks my heart. You know, a father, an uncle, a brother, you know, he had a girlfriend just breaks my heart to see this happening to our people and no one stepping up besides doing a hashtag and then we just kind of a couple of weeks go by and we're right back in the same situation it kind of dies down to the next thing we haven't even got over the Ahmaud Aubrey situation it just happened in Georgia so we go from that to this all within a couple of weeks you know so this is just constantly happening so we have to I just think we just have to you know go a little deeper we have to find our grassroots politicians to get in there and to you know when something like this happens we have to enforce the law charge them with those charges as if they were a regular person say hey when you strip all this down they are a human being that was murder that we saw on camera like that was basically murder he just sat there on this guy's knee and he just basically took the life that right in front of us so we need to have the charges the same and they're not being enforced. So I think we have to have those politicians from the grassroots up, get those guys in the office and don't have guys that are fold because that's what happened. And somebody will kind of pop up, we'll kind of get behind them and they get in the office and then something really happens and then they kind of fold under the pressure. We have to have somebody that, that won't fold under the pressure. And we have to have these people at all local levels. The chief police, you gotta have um, the DAs, you gotta have judges, you gotta have mayors, you gotta have more people of color like us to understand what's going on out here. And we have to enforce the law because they're policing us, but nobody's policing them. And that's my biggest issue. Nobody's policing them. They're doing what they want to do. They kill one of us. And then eventually they say, oh, we're going to charge him. But then the charge either gets dropped, you're going to put an administrative leave, and then it kind of goes under the rug. You don't hear anything about it until the next incident. So where do you think we go from here after we've seen something like this happen on camera? Where do we go from here? You know, I I, I thought about this earlier and it's, it's quite a layered response, you know, but um, I was thinking about how for so long, you know, black folks, but especially the black man you know, had been stripped away from knowledge, freedom, you know, like everything that would qualify a person to continue this evolutionary process to become better, you know. And I sat back and I thought about it like, black people are so strong. They're so strong and resilient of a people. When I think of a black man, I think strength, I think warriors, you know what I mean? And it's 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 tragic that all you ever see, especially on on the media, is like if they're not a rapper or a ball player, like they're in jail or like they're they're painted as this like a lesser than in society. When in, in reality, if you think about you know, a black man who's been educated, who is physically fit, you know what I mean? Like, imagine the, the amount of power, you know what I mean? And with that intelligence and that power, you can, you can gather a group of people who might not have the answer, but you can, you can direct them, you know what I mean? And I think, I, I know this is kind of going on a tangent, but not really. This is why I think it was so tough for the black community to hear like even Nipsey Hussle dying because I think he was definitely one of those people who was a leader, who had such an influence over the black community and many others, you know, to gather to, to, um, to, want, to even have the desire to learn, you know what I mean? And, and he was making a big difference and I think the biggest threat to the people who are killing us is us learning, getting our power and exercising it. The last thing that they want is a bunch of educated black folks to retaliate. You know what I'm saying? I just, 
I'm a little passionate because obviously I'm upset about the whole situation. Who 